Game Over 86, guys, coming back with this beautiful Monday morning video. I hope you guys all had a wonderful weekend. I know I did, but I am going to be talking about XO 2018. Yes, Xbox's big show before video game awards. And yes, it was in New Mexico City. I'm going to be talking about the ups and the downs, give you guys my thoughts and opinions about the show. Let's go ahead and just get right into it. So Xbox holds their big XO every year, I believe. Um, right before at the end, you know, the big bang, I should say, to get everybody excited um, to go out and buy Xbox, especially before the holidays. I know a lot of people were excited to hear about this. I know a lot of people were getting jacked about XO 2018. Um, and, and honestly, I was excited to hear about it. I didn't do a lot of videos talking about it, honestly, because um, I was going to wait to see because... Um, when you get burned too many times by Xbox, I think honestly, you just have to now wait instead of anticipate or um, you know talk about rumors and all this other stuff that can happen. Because let's face it, it's not always going to happen. But I do want to say they their big shebang at the end, you know, their big their big pretty much splurge at the end is they have purchased two more studios, which a lot of people knew Obsidian was going to be purchased. Uh, the creators behind uh, New Fallout New Vegas three. Um, they're the creators behind South Park, The Stick of Truth, Pillars of Eternity, stuff like that. And they also purchased In Exile, which um, has games like Wasteland 2 and whatnot. So that was that was some good news, I guess, for a lot of Xbox fans or a lot of people going forward. Um, they talked about new games coming to Xbox Game Pass. Um, the lineup's kind of weak, um, to be honest with you. And just to bring this up, if you guys are having trouble. Um, seeing this image, I'll zoom it up a little bit and talk about it. Battlegrounds, obviously PUBG is coming to the PS4, so of course they're going to release that and put it on their Game Pass to get everybody going. Void Bastards, really never, never really heard of that game, to be honest with you. Hellblade is another game that's free, which, which is a pretty beautiful, good looking game. Um, Ori and the Blind Forest, really fun game. And then Ori, Will of the Wisp, which is going to be a really good game as well. Them are two really good games. So when they come, them are good games to play. I suggest if you guys haven't played um, Ori's yet, play obviously the Blind Forest and then Will of the Wisp. Sea of Thieves, really never um, heard of uh, all the stuff. I understand some of that stuff are DLC add-ons and stuff like that. Um, Kingdom. Another smaller game, After Charge, it might be an alright game. Supermarket, Shriek, um, like I said, it, these are a lot of these games are smaller ones. Secret Neighbor is like, I think, a new game or it's a DLC before they're going to be releasing um, Hide and Seek from Neighbor, the new game. Um, the Good Life, I mean, this one's just, like I said, May, Agents of Mayhem wasn't really that fun. It, MXGP3, you know, motocross racing game, and then Thomas was alone. I, when I look at this lineup, to me, it's nothing It's nothing special. It really isn't nothing special to me. Um, my opinions on it, I mean, there, like I said, there's some games on there that are worth some value. But Ori and the Blind Forest, I paid 20 bucks for. Hellblade was, like, free on PlayStation Plus, and when it came to Xbox, I think $7. PUBG I've already owned a long time ago. so. Um, I mean, I guess people might play the other ones, but it's not like it's really, it's not like it's really drawing people in. And it may, and that's just my opinion, but I, when I look at these games, it reminds me of an Xbox Arcade on their, you know, Game Pass, and they're like, we have this many games, and I've said it before, some of the Xbox Arcade games are trash, just like anybody else. It's like filler, so it's an alright list of lineups, but um, they could have probably did better. But then they, they went through and talked about all the other games. And this is where I kind of was like, it was lackluster in my opinion. Yes, they released Crackdown 3. They showed, they gave you a release date in February. I think it's February 15th. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Um, but they're releasing that game. And they had people playing it. It did look pretty good. Uh, I'm glad that they had that finally to show. Um, but... I, I was sitting there with a buddy watching it, and I thought to myself, I was telling him, because he said, oh, I was anticipating this game, and I was, you know, I, I just told him, yeah, you know, a lot of people were, but these games were never really that big of games. Um, people can say what they want, but Crackdown and Crackdown 2 were never meant to be big, you know, 
budget games, third party title games that would sell consoles. Um, they just weren't. They were filler games back in the day. And to me, Crackdown 3, yeah, they can do all that, postponing, delaying, and all that. But if you ask me, the game still looks like it's um, not going to be the greatest game. I'm not dogging it right now because I don't know. But from the looks of it, when you cancel or delay it and postpone it that much, I was anticipating a little bit even better or more. Um, Devil May Cry 5 looked pretty good. You know, they were showing all this other stuff coming like Tomb Raider. Um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider DLC, Kingdom Hearts 3, State of the K2 DLC, um, obviously Fours of Four with their new stuff coming, Sea of Thieves DLC, Minecraft stuff, and then they were going to be talking about the Xbox, uh, you know, all the stuff that I just talked about on Xbox Game Pass, and then the Just Cause 4. This is all fine and dandy with their DLCs, especially with their exclusive ones, um, console exclusive ones like State of the Decay and Sea of Thieves and Crackdown and Minecraft or whatnot, and their Forza. But when you look at all the other games, like Just Cause 4 will be coming to PlayStation. You know, Tomb Raider's DLC is going to be coming to PlayStation as well. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3, Devil May Cry 4, uh, 5. A lot of these games are coming to PS4. So it's it's just like the E3. They showed a lot of the games ahead of time, and people are like, oh, that's crazy. Did you see all the games they showed? And a lot of games they showed to me were the same games that you could play on the PlayStation 4. It's not like they're showing me, you know, new games that everybody wants to see or or new IPs that people want to hear and not rerun, refresh IPs, and I'll get into that in just a second. But honestly, guys, um, um, well, I'll get into it right now, to be honest with you. I see a lot of old people always saying, oh, we want a new Banjo-Kazooie 3 or a Banjo Remastered. And I understand everybody's going to be getting into that mode. And and, and that's my problem. We, we, we expect the same stuff as gamers. We expect um, the same bullshit that these developers will keep feeding everybody. You know, and I get it. It's a, it's a you know, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie and all that stuff. A lot of people played Nuts and Bolts, you know, um, which was a garbage game. And, and that was after Rare was taken over by Microsoft. Notice the first two were good when Nintendo had them. And then it's like Microsoft takes over and you get Nuts and Bolts. You could just see. So when I, when people are wanting Banjo-Kazooie 3 or they're wanting Remastered, I'm like, to me, I'm not that excited because it's Rare under the Xbox brand. They're not. They've just never performed great games ever since, to me. Um, so when everybody wants these games to be released, they're wanting, you know, Fable. And and it's like, they want to see new games, but it's like they're not wanting to see new games. They're wanting to see old, refreshed titles with a fresh coat of paint or a remastered version. And I don't understand why fans don't want better. I was wanting Xbox to show a new IP. And they did talk about it. I do know that the guy did talk about it. And I'll end with that. But... I wanted them to show new IPs. I wanted them to show a new game that nobody's ever heard of, you know, kind of like what Nintendo did with, you know, Octopath Traveler or, or um, you know, certain games like PlayStation did with, uh, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn and, um, you know, just, they, it's just like they didn't. It was like they were scared to. And, and it's not that, you know, I'm afraid that Xbox is just behind the wheel, but, or behind the, you know, behind the curb it's just when you see these exo events to me it's just one big hype train obviously but then they don't show you the stuff that would really get people hyped to to tune in or to go buy an xbox i mean you you're tuning in to see i'm guessing finally crackdown 3 that's been delayed um you tune in to see a bunch of multi-plats some couple new studios. One of them's a pretty decent RPG, and the other one's um, made for what, like Wasteland and stuff like that. But then it's like people want old, refreshed product. People want to play the game that they've already played on the Nintendo 64. Um, and it's like these creators are living off these games, and it's like I want new IPs. I want Xbox to bring a new game that we've never heard of, and you know, like Scalebound before a long time ago when it got canceled. But it's like, that's the stuff that I'm talking about when PlayStation and Nintendo's doing it. I, I, I believe Xbox is just behind the curve when it comes out. And, and this is what I was going to end with, guys. And by the way, Xbox, you want to get people hyped up for games? Well, don't put an Xbox One S at $200 with Minecraft when PlayStation's got a $200 PS4 on Black Friday with Spider-Man 4. You lost that one right there. So, I mean, that right there to me is like, 
you're not going to win on, on Black Friday. You're just not. I can tell you right now. And um, But to end it, there was a guy he was talking about. I can't remember his name. And I really don't care because I don't look at these guys on a pedestal like they're important. I just look at the games because I'm a consumer that likes to play video games. So I don't put them on a pedestal like people do with um, you know, Phil Spencer, Matt Booty, or the other people, or Barrera, or whatever. I don't put any of them guys up there because I don't care. They're not important to me. Um, they work for a company that I so happen to play the games on sometimes. But he said that he had, I think, six games. The guy accidentally said, oh, whoops, I don't mean to put you on the spot. And then the guy said, yeah, we have six games to announce, but we can't announce them right now, unfortunately. We're going to have to announce that on uh, the game uh, awards. And to me, it was like, there's your chance, just like Blizzard had their chance to redeem themselves. The biggest thing you showed at the end were a couple studios that you bought. One was, I mean, let's be face, Obsidian's a good a place, but uh, Pillars of Eternity, Stick of Truth, you know, Fallout New Vegas, them are older games. Pillars of Eternity just dropped, and it's, it didn't get like grave reviews. It, it's not like it's the baddest game. It's not like you're. It's not like you're going to go buy an Xbox for these games. Okay, it's not like you're going to break the bank and go. Oh, I gotta have these games. And then in Exile or Exile or whatever, it, Wastelands games aren't that good. I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. They're not that fun. People can say what they want about it. They're not that good of games. And they've made other games too, but they're just not real well known. And they're going to keep them, you know, inside indie developing kind of way or, um, you know, smaller budget way. But it, it was all that tied in. All they had to do was just say, yeah, here's a new game or here's some. And, and I'm against this, but they could have said, you know, um, and, and I'm not against it in a bad way for gamers. I'm just against it because the developers are going to keep pushing these games and refreshing the content. But they could have showed maybe some, like a, a, a Fable 4 in the in the works. They could have even showed the Banjo-Kazooie just to hype it up, you know, just a teaser trailer. But they didn't, and that's why I'm saying, that's why they're slacking. And this XO event seemed boring and repetitive. It seemed like a new coat of E3. The same E3 that they did earlier this year. And I want to know, though, what you guys think about it. All in all, honestly, I'm I'm not real excited about the new year. If you're getting excited for Crackdown 3 um, and a lot of games that are, I mean, come on. A lot of the games that are, uh, Will of the Wisp is like an, an anticipated game I've been waiting on that, that I would buy. Um, other than that, I own a lot of the other games because they're just older games. Crackdown 3 looks okay, but I'm not I'm not going to go get it day one and, and be like, I'm done playing this. Like, there's just it, there's just no appeal anymore to a lot of the games that they're releasing. And, I, and I'm not the type of uh, gamer that wants all this refreshed, you know, reported, remastered all these games. Like, don't get me wrong. Do I like playing it? Would I play a new Banjo-Kazooie? Yeah, but it's like I want Xbox to strive to do better. And I'm not saying that they're not doing better by making a Banjo-Kazooie 3, but they made Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, and the game sucked. Okay, they made Sea of Thieves, and it sucked. You know, like Stay of the Decay, they had over 4 million active users. Okay. That's still, nobody's going to buy your Xbox for Stay of the Decay 2. Be honest with yourselves. And I'm not hating, I'm just saying, like, I would like to see Xbox come up with a new IP. Okay? And until they start doing that, it's like all you're going to get from the Xbox 2 is a new Halo game, a new Gears game, a new Fable game, and you've played them a 100,000 times. And I want some kind of just new random game that nobody's even thought of, you know, like back in the day. Like they would make, you know, not, not even exclusives, but like, you know, when Mass Effect's first dropped. You know, Dead Space first dropped. You know, a lot of people that... You know, Lost Planet. Some people don't like that game. Some people do. You know, and I'm not just harping on them. I'm, I want them to strive to do better. And we should all, not fanboys, but just gamers in general that appreciate video game and companies that need to work harder to strive to do better. So anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think uh, about the XO 2018. And let me know what your guys' opinions and thoughts are as well. What should they have done better? Did I say something that I should have said better? What do you guys think? Am I Am I wrong on it? What do you guys agree with? I want to know down in the comments. And if you guys are new to this channel, if you guys would do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, it does help my channel grow. And if you guys would like to share this video, leave a like. 
that would be uh, great and greatly appreciated as well. It does help my channel grow. And if you guys want to leave the thumbs down, that is awesome too because that helps me. Just let me know why you left the thumbs down. Let me know where I may have been wrong and maybe I can better my channel. Maybe let me know what I need to do better to help you guys appreciate more videos that I make. So anyway, guys, stay safe. I love every, I love each and every single one of you guys. Like always, guys, do a good deed. Take care of one another. Take care of one another. And I will see you guys back Wednesday. Enjoy Monday, guys. And I hope you guys have a fun time gaming. Peace.